Hello, this is the Inverse Proportion Maths Cast. Before you watch this video, please make sure you watch the Proportional Maths Cast because we're going to be building on the skills we've learnt there. So let's begin with our first question. Example 1 says A is inversely proportional to B. When A is 10, B is 2. Find the value of A when B is 8. So, key word in this question is this word here, inversely. So in the previous maths cast on proportion, we learnt that when it says A is directly proportional to B, we would write A is proportional to B. That's wrong in this case, because the word inversely tells us that this time it will be A is proportional to 1 over B. So the word inverse means we've got the 1 over B, not just B. So we'll get rid of this bit here so we don't get confused. A is proportional to 1 over B. So we know, and we've learned in the previous maths cast, that this proportional sign here we can't use. We need to change it into an equals sign. So when we change it into an equal sign, we'd get A equals. And we'd have 1 over B. But we know that when we change it to an equal sign, we must also have a K. So it would be K times 1 over B. Our job now is to work out what K is. And we use the information in the question. So the question says A is 10 when B is 2. So we're going to put these numbers into our formula. So A is 10. So underneath A, I'm going to write 10 equals K times 1 over B which will now be 1 over 2, because b is 2. Our job now is to get k on its own. To do that, I'm going to times by this 2 on the bottom. So I'll times by whatever's on the bottom there to get k on its own. So 10 times 2 is 20. So k is 20. Now I can rewrite this formula we have here and put my number for k, which is 20. So my formula, my main formula for the question will be A equals 20 times 1 over B. So this is the formula I'm going to use to answer part A. So let's have a look at part A. Part A says find the value of A when B is 8. So all we need to do is take this formula and put in the number 8 as B. So A equals 20 times 1 over B and b is 8. And now we work that out. Well, we can times the tops together. 20 times 1 is 20 over 8. So a equals 20 over 8. We can leave it as a fraction like that, or we can work that out as a number, which is 2.5. Both are correct. So this question is very similar to the previous maths cast on proportion, except because of the word inverse, we must do this 1 over b instead of just B. Right, let's have a go at another question now, a slightly harder one. So here's our second example. F is inversely proportional to the square of X. When F is 20, X is 3. Find the value of F when X is 5. So again, key word in the question is this word here, inversely. So we know, usually we just write F is proportional to the square of x, where we'd write f is proportional to x squared. But that's wrong, because it's inversely proportional. So this time, we're going to write f is proportional to 1 over x squared. So it's really important we have that x squared. So I'm going to cross out this top line so we don't get confused. And never forget the 1 over when it's inversely proportional. Now we're going to use the same method as previous. We can't solve it with this proportional sign in the middle. So we change it to f equals. And we've got our 1 over x squared. But we must include a k times at the front. Our job now is to actually work out our value of k. So to do that, we're going to use what information in the question. So f is 20, x is 3. So let's substitute these in. F is 20, so underneath F we're going to write 20 equals K times 1 over. But we're not going to use X is 3 because it's not just X, it's X squared. 
So x squared is 9, so I'm going to put 9 at the bottom there. Now what we do, we want k on its own. So to find k, we're going to times by this 9 on the bottom to get rid of the 9. So times both sides by the 9. So 20 times 9 is 180. So k is 180. So my formula here, I can now rewrite with my k value as 120, 180. Sorry. So f equals 180 times 1 over x squared. That is my main formula for this question. I'm now going to use it to put f is 5 to answer part A. So it says find the value of f when x is 5. So all I do is I write f equals 180 times 1 over x squared. And we know x is 5. So 5 squared, it's not just 5, it's 5 squared, is 25. So we put the 25 there times the tops together, 180 times 1 is 180, and the bottom will become 25. So f equals 180 over 25. And we can just leave our answer as a fraction. That's absolutely fine. So on the next page, I've got some questions for you to have a go at. And again, there are some extensions. So the two with stars by involve a little bit more working out because there's some more rearranging first. Good luck.